Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, we see a number of tests have been added to the asset processing system to detail the current behavior of actions like loading sub-assets and edge cases, while in the meantime, working groups like Async and Better Audio are making progress as usual. While in the ecosystem, Avian has moved to a GitHub organization, Avian Physics slash Avian, and moved to take on workflows that are similar to Bevy's when it comes to triage and migration notes. This is particularly interesting because Avian, which sees 0.4's release this week, has some of the most comprehensive release notes of any ecosystem crate, making them comparable, making them comparable to even Bevy's own release notes. And kicking it off with the PRs, we've got 21.475, which fixes a bug in Intel iGPU rendering. But what's really interesting about this PR is the documented debugging process to go from a rendered scene through the GPU setup into decompiled SpareV, and if you're interested at all in deep rendering bug debugging, this is a great PR to check out. It feels at the moment like every week we get a new Solari update. This is Solari support for indirect specular reflections. This was added to Solari's real-time renderer, increasing the capabilities yet again. And 21587 improved the output of commands.log components to better take advantage of tracing's structured logging when it's available. When combined with configuring the tracing subscriber that is now shown in the app log layers example, this can enable pretty printed output for debug values. Some of this work generally revolves around a feature of tracing that I feel like people generally aren't as aware of, and that's the debug sigil, which is this question mark here before a value. The debug sigil can be used to log structured data, such as this secret message alongside the actual log message. And these are the kinds of values that will get pretty printed new lines if you follow the suggested configuration. And moving on, Bevy gains new primitives fairly regularly, and 21563 adds a set of these to the math render primitives example. This is an example that allows you to go through all the rendered primitives and view them. The new primitives include selections such as segment 2D, polylines, cones, and conical frustums. And profiling Bevy applications can be done in a few ways, including using Tracy, as you can see the Tracy application here. Instructions for how to use this are contained in Bevy Docs Profiling.md, which brings us to the PR 21565, which updates these Tracy docs. But more importantly, the author behind the PR has put together a GitHub organization and a repo to provide builds of the Tracy application. This means that users who previously had to rely on outdated sources like Homebrew or Building from Source now have accessible pre-built downloads that live in the new Tracy Builds organization, making Tracy much more accessible and easier to use. There's no huge fancy builds going on here, no major adjustments to the build scripts. In fact, Upstream Tracy already builds for platforms like macOS. This organization is just running those and making the releases available rather than artifacts and GitHub Actions. And a second camera controller was added to the Bevy camera controller crate in 21520. This adds a 2D pan cam with settings for panning, zooming, and rotation via keyboard input. You can run this example with Cargo Run Example PanCam Controller with the PanCam feature. And 19.3.11 introduces new diagnostics that collect measurements of allocations from the Mesh Allocator and Mesh Bind Group Allocator, as well as the number of render assets present. These are particularly interesting metrics for people using a lot of materials or trying to keep closer track of their material allocations. And as usual, Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer level view into active PRs and how the bevy sausage is made which also often has comments on things like what makes an engine 1.0 or how to collaborate with other projects. And that kicks us off into the showcases with a tile map level using Bevy's brand new 0.17 tile map chunk rendering. We follow this up with a lens distortion effect. This lens distortion is a full screen post-processing node for cameras. And as the settings go up, you can get quite an extreme distortion. There are a couple of Bevy Steam audio uh, demos this week. In this case, the demo is showing off footsteps playing spatially simulated audio via, again, the Bevy Steam audio crate, which hasn't been released yet. Again, this is an audio uh, demo, so if you want to listen to it, definitely go see the demo in Discord. And this is runnable programs inside of another game, which happens to be a terminal emulator simulator. The programs here are implemented as simple states. Then we have a work in progress ring world. This ring world is being added to a space flight game. This week brought the level of detail model, that is the low res model, with the high resolution model and game integration coming later. And there's been a number of different examples of using Bevy with say TypeScript or using Bevy with other languages. This is Bevy with Python with hot reloading. 
The demo uses PyO3 for bindings and handcrafted.py typings. And up next, we've got Discovering Bevy Hanabi. This is Bevy Hanabi in a Bevy OXR based environment, including some pose detection for the hands. There were some requests to move the pose detection out into its own crate, which may or may not happen. And here's an update to Eternal. Eternal is a work in progress, open source 2D RPG. This week saw the addition of basic player movement, collisions, wall destruction, some effects, and a pixel perfect collision system. And this week also sees the release of another Bevy Experimental Editor, this one's repo is actually named Bevy Experimental Editor, which is an experimental scene editor for Bevy games. It works with Bevy 0.16, not 17, and is using eGUI, which is a pretty popular choice for these kinds of experiments. And here we've got another Bevy Steam Audio sneak peek, which is, of course, an audio-based demo, so <laughs> definitely go check out the audio in Discord if you want to listen to it. Uh, and Steam Audio is Valve's spatial sound simulation library, which can be embedded in your game and doesn't require releasing the game on Steam. The walls in this level have different acoustic properties applied to them that you can hear as you move from room to room. And then we've got a directional navigation demo with a bit of a twist. All the buttons here were added to the navigation automatically. And after deciding to try out Bevy a month ago, a team got together and this dungeon traversal for a new beat-em-up style game is now working, including a little mini map in the bottom right hand corner. And for one of the most visually impressive demos this week, this is Lost in the Woods. Foliage rendering, lighting, trees, and terrain combined with a fully custom render pipeline for grass and a fog volume with a custom texture. The landscape here was designed in Blender. And full disclosure, this is one of my own demos. This is a 2D visibility mesh. This is a quick sketch of a visibility mesh implementation which can be used to power MPC in player detection, lighting, and more. The approach takes mesh 2D vertices, runs them through line segment ray casting, and updates a regular mesh 2D with the positions each frame. And next up, back to 3D with a Portal and Half-Life inspired puzzle FPS. This is a work in progress puzzle FPS inspired by Portal and Half-Life. The prototype already includes working portal guns, working portals, narrative elements, and more. And this week, ExoFactory released its demo as part of Steam Next Fest. ExoFactory is a narrative driven factory builder where your narrative decisions unlock story progression. And progress on Bevy Point Cloud continues, showing off continuous loading based on the camera frustum and WASM and WebGL support. Here you can see a visualization of the Oct tree as well as a rendering of the Point Cloud. And something a little bit less visual to finish off the showcase is this is an MMORPG server emulator, which is an experimental server emulator written in Rust and Bevy, obviously, targeting Lineage 2. And into the crates this week, we've got Bevy Rand v0.12.1. With the release of Get Random v0.3.4, which fixes the web WASM builds to no longer need some config flags, a patch fix to Bevy Rand was released to pin Get Random to that version upwards. This means that building Bevy and Bevy Rand for the web will be much easier now, and as it's just a patch update, just run cargo update and you're good. MetaMerge is a brand new crate intended to create sets of macro attributes that you can use as a template and apply them across many items. While Lightyear gets another release with 0.25, Lightyear is a full featured networking library for Bevy, and 0.25 is a big release with a few sizable breaking changes. The crate now works better with Bevy enhanced input, which seems to be the go-to input handling crate in Bevy currently. And a new projectile replication example was created, showcasing various ways of doing projectile replication for FPS games. Lightyear is well documented, so go check out the examples or the tutorial if you want to know more. And that brings us to Avian Physics 0.4. Avian, if you're unaware, is an ECS-driven physics engine for Bevy, and 0.4 is the biggest release yet, with several new features, quality of life improvements, and bug fixes. Highlights include massive performance improvements, with Avian being three times as fast as before, with much better scaling for multi-core hardware. Force APIs have been completely overhauled, improvements have been made to joint and contact APIs, there's a brand new support for voxel colliders following on Parry's support, and there's a brand new benchmarking CLI for benchmarking various scenes and profiling multi-threaded scaling. The announcement post you can see here is quite long and comprehensive, and I highly suggest checking it out because it's got a lot of really good information. And moving on to Glam Matrix Extras 0.1. Sometimes Glam's matrix types are not enough. Glam Matrix Extras aims to address this by implementing various additional matrix types and utilities, such as dedicated symmetric matrices, rectangular matrices, and 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three eigen decompositions. This library is already being used in Avian and Bevy Heavy, and more will be added as use cases arise. 
And that brings us to Bevy UI Carousel. This is a carousel implementation with picking, drag, keyboard, buttons, looping around, etc. This is being used for a mobile game home screen similar to Clash Royale. And we've got two posts in the educational section this week. One is on KTX2 compression. This is a post I actually wrote, hoping to enable other people to get into texture compression. And thus, at the bottom of the post, there's a couple of commands that you can go run to test it out. And then there's a second post that I also happen to have written on Bevy Observer filters. People typically expect this on component filter pattern to work for everything. And this post dives into why it doesn't and what you can do to make it work. Although I do anticipate that some form of this is going to get upstreamed at some point, as Bevy maintainers are aware of the way people expect these to be used. And that's it for this week in Bevy. As always, we have all of the pull requests that were opened this week on the website if you want to go through them, as well as the issues and PRs that were opened if you want to do some review or fix some small bugs. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your week.